Now, I want to let you in on a little secret I was talking about. It's been the key to my success in the martial arts, and it also helps me a lot in life. I call it the code of the arts. This is the way I train my mind and body to work as one. See, the code of the arts is like a puzzle. There are eight pieces you need to have to put this puzzle together. You will learn them all. Then, you can become a great martial artist. Don't try to learn martial arts on your own. You can pick up some bad habits and unsafe habits that way. You know, find yourself a good karate school with a qualified sensei to teach you. Always warm up properly before working out. Warming up can keep you from getting injured. next thing we're going to do is called running in place. It's just like you guys are just going to run. You guys do it every day at home. What I want you guys to do is run in place just like this. Pick your knees all the way up, though, just like it's called half jacks. They're just like jumping jacks, but what we're going to do is we're only going to go halfway up, not all the way up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one and, and hit our sides just like this to help tighten up your stomach, okay? Just like this. Watch. One, just like that, okay, guys? The next thing we're going to do is called mountain climbers. Now, it's like climbing a mountain. What you're going to do is you're going to go down on the ground just like this. What you're going to do is you're going to pick your knees all the way up and go one, just like that, two, three. And what the next thing we're going to do is called a trajectory kick. What you're going to do, this is, this is like a kick, but it's more of a stretch. What you're going to do is you're going to take a left forward stance. You're going to put your right arm straight out in front of you. What you're going to do is you're going to swing your leg all the way up to touch your hand just like this, like that, and, and again, just like that. It stretches all these muscles out back here. Take the time, but make sure that you do each of these warm-ups properly. Okay, nice and slow. We don't want to hurt ourselves. Don't do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable or causes pain. Take it to the limit and hold it there. Get them nice and loosened up. That way when we throw punches and kicks or we block something, we don't have any injuries. And everybody turns out to be a happy camper instead of walking around like this. Okay? And loosen up our back muscles and our spine. Do this one very carefully. If it's uncomfortable, don't do it. Kind of like you're doing a hula hoop or something. There you go. So you guys must be pretty good with the hula hoops. And down. Don't bounce. One, two, three, nine. Go. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And up. Okay? Everybody just kind of do this with your knees real quick. Just to get the blood going back into our legs. All right. Brotherhood is the first piece of the puzzle. It means working together with others. Helping each other out. Not criticizing or making fun of your fellow students. Stances. The front stance. What we're going to do is we're going to take our left foot, we're going to put it out so that it's bent. We're going to keep 80% of our weight on our front leg, and we're going to keep 20% on the back leg. The back leg should be straight, toes and heels should all be on the ground, our shoulders should be straight forward. Okay, keep your hands up. There you go. Good. Shoulders should be forward. Make sure our shoulders are facing the front of the room. So if we go from here to here, we're centered, we're low to the ground, and we have more balance. Okay? We're going to step out with our left leg forward into our front stance. I want to hear a key eye. Ready? Oh! Oh! We're going to step to our first position. Okay, out in key eye. Oh! Oh! Up, out in key eye. Oh! Oh! Why do we key eye? What's going to leave a bigger impression? If I throw a punch like this, or if I go, oh! Uh, uh. What's going to make a bigger difference? Because the ki, not only does it strengthen us, but it's very intimidating to our opponents. The back stance. Step in and throw a right punch toward me, toward my face. Go ahead. I can step out. I'm in my back stance. I've blocked. At the same time, she's open to me, which means that I can strike anywhere in here. If she does it the other way, I can step either way. Same punch. I can step outside, which leaves all of this open to me. I'm going to plant my right heel. I'm going to do my left leg forward. My right heel is going to be set on this line. My left foot is going to be across. My heels are still, my heels are on the same line. I'm well balanced. We're going to keep 70% of our weight on the back leg and 30% on our front leg. 
my hands are going to be in the fighting position either here. Okay? This is where our hands are going to be. This is how we're going to be. Our backs are going to be straight. Our shoulders are going to be straight. And we're going to be set. Okay? So if I start here, I'm in my stance. I'm going to come here. I'm going to bring my legs together. I'm balanced. Also, the importance of bringing your knees in together here is so that nobody can kick you inside here. If we come up to here, we can get kicked inside the legs, you can get kicked in the groin. So you want to come from here to here, to there, to your next one. Do you see? The horse stands. Feet fairly wide apart, back is straight, shoulders are back, hands are on our hips, close the fingers, wrap the thumb. That's how we make a fist. We're going to be set. We're going to be deep, okay? You want your feet a little bit further, just outside your knees. You want your, your back straight. Good. Looks good. Now, his hands on those hips. Get the elbows back, the shoulders back. There. Left leg forward, hands on our hips. Back is straight, knees are out, low to the ground, we're stable. From here, we're going to step forward to the middle. Step out with the right foot. Oh, yeah! Step to the middle. Oh, yeah! Never use martial arts against anyone except to defend yourself from an attack. And even then, you should use the least amount of force necessary to get yourself out of that situation. You know, don't try to use karate to break things like boards or bricks. It takes years of dedication and practice before you can do it safely. Blocks. The best way to block is not to be there. If I'm going to throw a punch at her, she doesn't even have to block. But if she moves, I'm not going to hit her. Right? Yes, sir. OK, so what do we do? Come here a minute. When we step up, if she's going to throw a punch at me, go ahead. Even if I hadn't blocked, step back. Go ahead. She's not going to hit me. The block is an insurance policy. That makes sure. OK? Go back. Now, first rule, whenever you're doing blocks, I'll show you something I never want to see. I never want to see anybody do this. Okay, you see how my elbow's straight? Have you guys ever thrown a punch or something really hard, locked your elbow, and you feel pain in your elbow? Sure, sure. You don't lock your elbows, okay? That's dangerous, and it's very uncomfortable, so don't do it. From here, what's going to happen is my elbow is going to stay bent. I'm going to line up. I'm blocking with my left hand. I'm going to cross with my left hand on the inside. From here, it's going to come to there. My elbow is still bent. Now it's straight. Now it's bent. Right to the edge. It's bent, OK? Sure. That's what I want. So my left hand is going to cross inside. Boom. That's where I am. My right hand comes back. If I'm going to block with my right hand, right hand comes inside of my cross. It comes out. My left hand goes back to my belt. My right hand is slightly bent. It's down, and there's a snap. I want to hear a when you block. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do what's called the square horse dance, okay? Put your legs out just like this. It's kind of like riding a horse. You wanna bend your knees all the way out. Hands straight out in front of you, make a tight fist. Hands back in home position, just like that. The first an outer block. The next thing we're gonna learn now is called a downward block. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, the first step we're gonna do is take your hands from home position, cross above your head just like this. Now watch, shoot the downward block straight down. Your left arm comes back in home position and you're gonna block. And that's used to block against a kick. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is this cross one and block two. Yeah! Just like that. Okay, ready? From that position, cross one, block two. Yeah! From that position, cross one, block two. Yeah! Just like that. That's called a downward block. Okay, from here, our hand, we're gonna block with our left hand. So here's the way it's gonna work left hand is gonna come out. Yeah! So now let's show you guys why we need this block. Okay? And suppose I'm a big guy and I come at him on the street and I want to throw a front snap kick. Okay, I throw the kick, he's going to block, and he's going to push my foot off. Now look what happens. Step into a front stance. Boom. You see how they connect? Horse stance moves from a front stance, go from a block to a punch. It all connects. Okay, this new block is called a rising block. Okay, and this protects the top of your head. Okay, and it uses the same part of the arm, which is the forearm. This is Okay, a rising block goes straight above the head. So what you're going to do is take your left arm and block straight above your head, just like this. That's it. And block. Notice the arm goes back in home position. Ready? And block. That's it. Good. And block. And block. 
from there, I'm protected. From there, I can do what I want. If your arm ends up like this, if I throw a punch and she blocks it with a straight arm, it's going to hurt because her arm is going to break. Something has to give. So you don't want to do it like this. You want it to be slightly bent, like all of you guys' are. So what happens is my fist will come down and off, as opposed to just straight down. You have to keep trying. Stick with something, even if you don't get it right the first time. Martial arts isn't always easy. It takes years and years of practice. Look at me. I've been doing it my whole life, and I still practice every day. The out to end block. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to pull our right hand back behind our ear with our elbow out. This hand's going to stay on our hip, and from here we're going to twist and come in. We're not going to stop center. We're going to go through to our outside shoulder. This way, we get a full swing. In case, in case we miss our block, we don't want to get hit anyway and go back 10 feet. So we're going to deflect that punch completely. So we're going to start here behind the ear and come through. And when it comes through, we're going to twist. Watch my hand. It's going to come through and twist. And there's power in that. It's boom. Go ahead and throw a punch. OK. Now his punch has come through. Now he's a big guy. It's going to hurt. Now if he comes through and I might stop my block right here, what happens if, if I stop here he keeps going? He's still going to hit me, right? Yes, sir. So what I'm going to do is when I come through, I'm going to twist through where my center line is so that his punch goes out there. Step through and punch again. Yeah. From here, I came all the way through. Let's assume that I stop here. I can't see him. Now what happens if he throws another punch? Go ahead. I'm going to be in trouble because most likely he's going to ride around and clock me. OK, good job. This one works for if I do an inside block this way, I can come back here for a stretch. All right? So here, he strikes an inside block so that I can catch with this one and strike out. The next step in the code of the arts is respect. You must respect your instructor and your dojo. Come on up. Sure. If she comes at me with an overhead hammer strike, I can step back into a back stance with a rising block. Go ahead. Oh! From here, I'm set. I've got my block. My arm is bent. Her arm's going to go down there. And bonk her on the head. Hop back in line. Sure. All right, now from there. Come on up, Luigi. He throws a right punch. Go ahead. I can step into my front stance, and I can move it. I stepped back. Had I stayed there, you see, he got me anyway. Do you know why? He extended himself, and I didn't step far enough back. But the difference was, is if I hadn't stepped back, he'd have buried that punch a lot harder. Now, if he's going to throw a right punch at me, and he's going to throw it at my stomach, he's going to throw it at me, what am I going to do? OK, well, I can stay in a horse stance. Go ahead. Hey I can do a low block. Low block to that punch. From there, I can move wherever I need to go. Punches. These two right here, these are the most powerful knuckles. What happens is, is when we punch, we're going to keep a straight line right down here. Fingers curl down, thumb wraps around. Question, why do we, why do we stand like this when we punch? If I'm this far apart and I want to move quickly, I can't move as quick. If I'm set like this and a punch comes in, I'm much more agile. I can move much faster. I'm more prepared. So we, the reason that we're like this is if I want to go into a punch, I can sidestep here and do whatever I need to do. If I'm in a deep stance like this, it takes me longer to get up, to go through that, and to move. Okay, So that's why we stand like this when we punch and when we spar. This is our sparring stance. This, this is what you'll see on the street. This is what you'll see from people that aren't experienced fighters. When they go to throw a punch, you might see something like this. OK, that's not what I want to see. I don't want to see this arm pull back and punch. They're going to punch. And when we punch, I don't want to see the shoulder move. OK, now there's a difference. You watch my shoulder real carefully. If I'm going to throw a punch straight, watch this. What happens? It's going to come, boom. It's going to explode from there. My shoulder isn't going to do, it's not going to go back and then forward. From here, it's going to be. It's straightforward. There's no backwards movement. Hands up here. Okay, guys? Now watch. This is what you're going to do. It's called a reverse punch. Sort of like a single punch, 
but it's called a reverse punch, using the first two knuckles, because again, they're bigger and stronger, okay? Here we go. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pivot. You guys follow me at home, watch the motion. <laughs> Boom, to here. See my shoulders, I'm not doing this. And look at my foot, it's pointing, my knee's pointing directly at you. So back, so you're gonna go, <laughs> back. Backs. This is the way you should do it. Boom. Okay, that's called the reverse punch. Okay, guys, watch my foot here again. This is what I don't want to see. I don't want to see anybody's foot when they throw this punch go like this. That's bad. You can sprain your ankle and you'll hurt yourself. What I want to see is this. Back foot's going to turn to right there. It's going to be almost straight up. That's where you're set. Okay? This new punch is called a vertical punch. It's real simple. Do this. See that? A vertical punch, punching with the first two knuckles, is straight up and down. Okay, vertical punch. The reason why for a vertical punch is it can go to different parts of the body. But remember, don't use martial arts unless you have to. This is an emergency situation. All right, so what we're going to do is this. From this position, instead of pivoting all the way, your, your wrist all the way around, you're going to do this. Okay, so watch. See where my wrist is? A vertical punch. And back. Ready? And back. And back. And back. And back. And back. And Cooperation. You should help out whenever you can. Remember, work together. Ah. Kicks. The front snap kick. When you throw a front snap kick, let's say it's my left leg. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it up in one step. Where my knee points is where my foot is going to go. From there, look at my foot. My foot's pointed down, my toes are curled back, the ball of my foot is exposed. From there, I'm going to shoot it forward. That's going to be step two. From there, I'm going to recurl, pivot, and I'm going to set it down after that. So we have up in one, we have extending kick in two, back in three, and down in four. Now, the position that your feet should be in, it should be like you're walking like this on your feet. When you throw a front snap kick, that's how your foot's going to be, just like this. That's how you're going to connect. This is the part of the foot that you're going to kick somebody with, OK? Now, I don't want to see any of this. I want to see this. The side kick. Up and one. Foot's going to be turned, it's going to be up, it's going to be turned, and cock it. Pull it as far into your chest as you can get it, okay? You're going to extend with the heel. Toes are going to be lower than the heel of the foot. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. You're going to have a straight line from your heel to your knee to your hip. You're going to recock, turn it back over, and set it down. I want you to take a left forward stance. Hands up. Okay, now watch. This is what I want you to do. Your back leg is going to come up and, and fold just like this. Watch. One. And your hips turn. See, my back leg turns towards the back door. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Watch me. Two. And right back. And see how I bring my leg back? I kick, recoil. Kick, recoil. OK, so here we go. Ready? Now you're going to try it. Here we go. In, in sets. Here we go. So the first set, what we're going to do is jam our knee into our chest. OK, so jam one. Whew. Now kick two and down and back. The roundhouse kick. When we connect to the roundhouse, this is the part of the foot we're going to connect with. Okay? okay? So what we're going to do from this position is there's four steps. Okay? The first step, I want you to follow me. The first step is to pick your knee up like you're going to do a front snap kick. Okay? Turn your body, kick, and land. Now back into your stance. First step, one. Second step, turn, kick, and land and right back down. Whew. Okay, now you want to remember when you're doing this roundhouse kick that there's a certain pivot. Okay, that pivot is in the hips. Watch my hips. Watch my front foot. Okay, it starts off here. Toes point in this direction. Now, as I kick, watch my back foot. Whew. Where does it land? My back foot turns all the way back towards the back of the wall. Okay, so your, your front foot pivots and turns to get this kick. Do you see? is what I don't want to see.
Okay, I don't want that leg to come up like that. I want it to come up, turn, kick. I want those steps in there. All right, good class, guys. Now, you guys have got no excuse not to break this tape out and practice these moves ten times on each side three times a week. That's how you're going to get good. In the meantime, go to your parents. Have them find you a qualified martial arts instructor. That's how you learn the martial arts. Between your instructor and your dedication and your hard work, you too are going to be an expert. In the meantime, help stop the violence and keep the peace.